So the next thing that we want to know is how to work with different workbooks. And one of the first things that we need to know is that workbooks will have file paths or the folder where you can find them. So if I look at a scenario here, I have an Excel worksheet that contains raw data. Then I have my macro file that the user will open. And by simply clicking a button, my macro file will open the raw data, pull out the most current results or pull out the information that it needs. And then eventually we're going to uh, manipulate that data and then we're going to write it into a third workbook that we're going to create uh, called summary. So we've got the raw data, this might update daily, weekly, monthly, whatever. Um, the user doesn't care. The data is somehow put there from a, uh, from a SQL data server or from another source, but it's there and it updates. As a developer, we want to write just a piece of code inside of it, its own workbook, easy to execute. So the user, when they do that, it will open the raw data that's been updated, manipulate it, take action on it or whatever, and then create a results workbook that we can use. So we're not actually writing anything into this um, macro worksheet, although we could. We could create a new worksheet in here called summary and we could add it uh, into that summary worksheet. So if I want to know if I'm in this macro book and I want to open this, this raw data file, I need to know how to find it. If everything is in the same folder, the raw data, the macro, and then eventually your results file, uh, you may not have to do this file path. But if it's in different locations, you will certainly need to, to use the file path variable to figure out how to find your different data. So that's what we're going to take a look at right now. If I wanted to know the path of those two files that are sitting on my desktop, they're on the C drive, in the users folder, in my Hawk ID, in my desktop. If I type that in every time this application runs, then it's always going to look there. So if the files change, uh, that could cause us a problem. So in order to find the file path, we're going to use two things that we haven't talked about yet. The first thing that we're going to use are public variables. So we've been using private variables so far. So if you're inside of the sub, the variable gets populated. It can only be used inside of this sub. When you move to the next sub, you have to redeclare the variable and repopulate the variable. We want variables that will live across subs so that you can declare it in one place and continue to use it in other subs. Those are called public variables. They're easy to declare. Instead of dim, we're just going to use the word public. We give it a name and we give it a data type. Public variables usually live at the very top, right under option explicit and right before any um, subs. Then the other thing that I want to introduce to you is this notion of a function. So a function operates the exact same way that a sub does. The only difference is that a function is used internally, where a sub may return information out to the user. So if I create a function, it's going to be for my program to use internally to figure something out. Maybe it's a tax rate, maybe it's whatever. In this case, it's going to be the file path. But the user never receives the information coming out of that function. The only thing that uses the information coming out of that function are my other subs. So I'm going to put it, uh, generally you're going to have the public variables, then you're going to have your main sub that calls things for you, then you'll have your functions, and then you'll have your regular subs. Functions are easy to declare. They're just like uh, subs, only you name them functions. So instead of using the word sub, we're using the word function. So if we take a look at what I've done, at the very top I've declared a public variable that will live across subs and functions. 
named a file path, declared it as a string. I have to run that function every time I want to use file path. In order to run it every time, I'm going to use this uh, main sub. The main sub lives at the top and it calls all of the other subs in the order you want them called. So the very first thing I want to do is get the file path and populate that variable. Then I'm just dumping it out to a message box to see if it looks right. So let's have a look. So when I run main, main is going to run get file path. Get file path is going to populate this public variable that I've declared up here with the active workbook, which is this chapter eight macro dot path. So I'm assuming that the raw data is sitting right beside this macro uh, worksheet workbook. And it returns the file path. And I can see that's just the folder level. Uh, but that's fine. I can manipulate it from there. Now, I will caution you that this does not work the same on Mac uh, and Windows machines. So if you write something for a Windows machine and you're using these file path variables, they're totally different on a Mac. So sometimes there are problems with this uh, when you're switching between Windows and Mac. So the easiest thing to do probably is open another workbook. Um, so we're going to do that now. So I've declared this public variable. I'm populating the public variable with the, the file path using a function that will only be used internally. And I'm using this main sub. So the first thing I'm going to do is populate that file path. And then the next thing I'm going to do is open up our raw data, which was this file. And I'm going to open that raw data using workbooks.open, very simple command. And then I'm using the file path variable. And then I'm appending to that this particular string. So remember when we did the message box up here, it returns us to the folder level. And then this is basically just putting backslash chapter eight data dot XLS X behind it. And it finds the workbook and it opens the workbook. And in this case, it's making the active sheet, whichever sheet was active when you saved it and closed it. So in this case, it's sheet two. So if I want to control this better then I need to Now this should make sheet one active when it opens. And it does. So opening uh, worksheets are not too big a deal. When it opens, the workbook that just opened becomes the active workbook. You don't know which worksheet is active when it opens. So if you want to uh, manipulate, you're gonna have to declare that uh, and, and activate it manually. If I want to switch between workbooks, uh, I just use the activate command. So I specify the workbook I want to switch to and then activate. So in this case, it'll open up data. And when it opens data, that will become the active workbook and it'll switch to a sheet. But then if I want to go back to the macro, I have to activate the macro. So you have to hold its hand just like you did with worksheets and tell it exactly which one you want to be in uh, uh, to take action. So let's see what this looks like. So we should see uh, data open uh, and then we should see macro jump in front of it as the active. And we did, there's macro, there's data. So if we wanna create a new workbook, that results file, we can do it with simple workbooks add. And when we create, when we do workbooks add, it creates a new workbook um, and it makes it active. So the new thing we created is, is active. So then we can immediately use active workbook 
save as and give it the file path and the name that we want it to have. And it looks like this when it runs. Gives it a name. When we close it, it doesn't prompt us to save or anything like that. And now it is our new workbook. Now, the thing to know is if we try to open a workbook that's already open, or we try to close a workbook that's already closed, or we try to create a workbook and save it as something that's already there, all of those things generate errors. And we would need to have some pretty robust error handling. And when we start to do that, is when we get into problems between Windows and Mac. Um, for right now, we're just going to assume that you're going to delete out files, uh, things like that. We're not going to worry so much about the error handling yet. So the next thing I want to do here is actually manipulate some data now that we've got a new file created and we've got our file open. Uh, so I'm just doing some simple copy down here. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that the file I want to copy the data from is active. And then I want to get on the correct worksheet and make sure it's active. And after I'm on the correct active sheet, then I can select my range and I'm gonna do a copy. Now the thing I wanna paste into, I'm going to have to activate it. I'm going to have to activate the sheet and then I'm going to select the range. and then I'm going to paste it in. Then I'm going to come back and get the other sheet, sheet two. Uh, I'm going to select that range and copy it. Then I'm going to go back to the results and I'm going to paste it where I want it pasted. So just some simple manipulation there. I'll add that to my main. So I'm going to get the file path. I'm going to open, I'm going to create, and then I'm going to copy. Let's see what happens. Uh, here's an example. I didn't delete the workbook before I started running this. I'm getting an error. I need to make sure my data is closed. All right, let's try it again. There we go. So it's went to data sheet one and copied these, pasted them here, and then it went back to data sheet two, grabbed this, pasted it out here. So it's jumping back and forth and working as it should. Now, the last thing that I want to do uh, is I want to close this data, this raw data, and then I want to close this. But notice when I close it, it prompts me to save. So I need to just stick that little bit in there. So I'm just going to create a sub and stick that code in here real quick. So I've just created a sub to close everything up. So the last thing I want to do is save the results. So I've copied things over there. I've chose to save it here. You can save it up here, whatever you wanted to do, but we need to save it so we don't get that prompt for the user. And then I just close it with workbooks.close and the name of the workbook and do the same thing for data. So when it runs, it looks like this. Everything is closed up neatly. And if I open up the results file, I can see that that information has been copied over and it's all been saved up. The last thing we need to know how to do is delete a workbook. And there's not a clean method uh, within Excel to do that. So we're going to use kill. Uh, so kill, and then we're going to pass it the name of the book that we want deleted. So I'm going to grab this results file and I probably want to do that right here before I create a new one. So if there is an existing one, then we'll kill it uh, and then we'll go on to create the new one. So if I were to do that and I notice there's not a results file right now, I'm going to get an error message. Okay, uh, so I'm just going to comment this out for the first run.
and attempt to run it again now that it's commented out. I can see that I have a results file now. So the first thing this will do, uh, it'll get the file path, it'll open the raw data, if it'll delete this existing results file, and then it'll create a new results file. Looks like this. Watch this go away and then come back. There you go. And again, there needs to be a lot of error handling with this uh, to make sure that we're um, we're saving uh, the results and are that we're we're not trying to open files that are already open or close files that are already closed or uh, you know delete and create and um, it can get kind of messy. But there's some basic functionality there and it's good functionality uh, and you should be able to to manipulate that pretty well by now.